So welcome back to the PDAC Mining Staff segment we have here. It's midday uh, through uh, to the PDAC. It's around 11 o'clock. And here I have with me uh, Mr. Jeff Candy of MindWeb.com. Uh, again, PDAC, overall a lot of exploration geologists that come around uh, from around the world, mining financiers, and several experienced journalists just like Jeff Candy himself. Now he's a managing editor of MindWeb.com. And he also, he's also created this very interesting uh, concept there with podcasts of which he interviews CEOs, mining uh, exploration geologists, several experts from around the world. And really brings a very unique perspective to, uh, to, to, a, lot of, uh, to a lot of us as well. So, uh, so we'll go ahead. So uh, Jeff, welcome. Thank you for, for having me. It's, been, yeah. it's, 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 it's good to chat to you. Excellent. Well, I've read a lot of your stuff. Very, very interesting. And you know, the only thing I could come up with is that let's just talk about the overall change of what's going on uh, going forward. So one of the things you do is that you, you, know, you do travel to several conferences, and one of them being Mining in Daba, which just happened in the first week of February. Uh, so what was the sentiment there uh, as we go through the PDAC? You know, what was the sentiment there? I think it was a little bit more positive than I was expecting it to be. I think the interesting thing was that it, it sort of felt a little bit like it was the continuation of the 2013 conference with a break between mm. sessions of about 12 months. And, and okay. it, it was very much, I think, a sense of things have to get better. They have to get better soon because clearly they can't get much worse than right. they are. But a slight tinge of, of resignation almost coming into into the, the presentations, into the into the conversations that you have where people are saying, well, you know, it's got to get better, but we perhaps don't really know quite how long it's going to take this time mm -hmm. around. And so we may as well just enjoy the sun of, of Cape Town for a few days in amongst the, the, the you know, the deep dark winter that, that we've been right. having both on metal markets and in, in North America. Exactly. And you've been to that conference several times, mm -hmm. so you, you know, you definitely noticed a change on more on the positive side going forward. A, a little bit. I, I think... I think one of the, the I think the only thing we can say with confidence at the moment in the metals markets is that everything has taken a little longer than expected right. this time around. So the the super cycle lasted longer than a lot of people said it would. I think the the plateau effect lasted longer. The downturn, the first downturn, mm -hmm. lasted longer, etc. The pick up, the downturn again. So I think people are beginning to get a sense of well, maybe actually this isn't over yet, yes. and we're going to have to you know dig deep. Claw, claw with our fingernails to, to get through this and, mm -hmm. and you know now maybe maybe we should be looking at, at m a and those kinds of things but it's it's definitely taken longer than expected yeah. well we've definitely seen some indications of that in North America uh, with the Cisco bid uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that uh, raised a lot of, of hope I think that came in mm -hmm. and energized the sector perhaps more than it the, the, than the deal actually yeah, <laughs> deserved. Exactly. it got yes, a lot more yes, attention yes. than perhaps it deserved <laughs> purely because people were thinking maybe this is the beginning of something big yes and i'm you know, i'm really positive i'm really optimistic of things going forward so as long as long we see see those kind of indications in the market i think things will go well um, now one of the things that you do is that you know on mindweb.com you interview several ceos from several producers and uh, one of the things that you do is with you know with north american companies south american companies south american companies and even some uh, south african companies as well um, now, what are their views on the sector going, that happened in uh, 2013 and going forward to 2014? How are they going to operate going forward? I think you've seen a massive focus on costs and, and that's mm. been coming for a while. And, and I think particularly in the gold space, you've seen a lot of, from the, the, the investment side of things, people saying, well, you know, you've had this massive run in the bull market, mm. uh, or a massive run in the gold price. Correct. The results haven't been what, what investors had hoped for, perhaps what, what uh, you know, what the, the shareholders had wanted. And, and we and experienced now, that from all the North American companies that, that announced their results in the last month. Here. Exactly. And, and yeah. I, I, think, I think the sense of it has been that, you know, perhaps now they're beginning to realize, okay, we can't really rest on our laurels so mm -hmm. much anymore. We need to cut costs. We need to get back to the, the focus on mining. It's no longer about size anymore. It's no longer about being the biggest company in the world, the, having the biggest asset base, the, the biggest resource base. It's now about making sure that not only do you mine, but you mine profitably and you actually generate cash flow. And, and I think that's that's evidenced in, in everything from the, the, the focus on that new World Gold Council standard in terms of, of how to report costs, just in general, a little bit more transparency coming through and perhaps a little bit more of a sense of of uh, responsibility to, to shareholders again. I think that's come through quite a lot. Well, talking about responsibility, how about the responsibility to uh, you know the various communities that they work in? Have you seen kind of a, uh, I guess, quote unquote, social license mm. to, to operate there? You know, having those things? I, I think there is a sense now that no longer can it really be. And, and, and this is, some, to some extent, something that's been happening for a long time. But, but I think the mining sector, particularly in, in emerging economies, so the likes of South Africa, the rest of Africa, South America, for a long time, mining companies have done a lot of good work. Historically, they've done 
a lot of bad things as well. Yes, but but yeah. there was for a long time a sense of we're just going to stick our head down, we're going to do what we need to do and, and not put our head above the parapet because for a long time that has resulted in either higher royalties, higher right. sanctions, you know, complaints by, by all and sundry really. Mm -hmm. There is now perhaps a, a bit more of a sense of, of companies saying, well actually we are doing good things and perhaps we need to start telling people that because mm -hmm. you, you haven't seen that in the past. And, and I think some of the companies are saying, well, you know, from a, from a corporate social responsibility point of view, it's no longer just about ticking boxes, it's no longer just about pandering to, to governments or whoever right. it is. We actually do these things mm -hmm. and perhaps it's now time for people to realize that because mm -hmm. I think it's important for not just the mining companies but the, 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 the communities involved that actually do see some benefits as well. Excellent. Well, you know what? Now, going from that, I mean, you have spoken to many, you know, because there's all talk about Indian gold demand, supply and Chinese gold demand. You've spoken with several experts in that industry. And one in, one actually uh, interview that you did just recently really caught my attention. Uh, and uh, it was with a, uh, with a gentleman by the name of Mr. Kunal Shah with Nomal Bung, which is, uh, uh, you know, one of the largest brokerages in India, from my understanding. And you can, uh, you know, sure. add more detail to that. Uh, and they just released a year-end book uh, and uh, talks about the commodities and he's a head of commodities there, uh, head of research. And uh, can you just talk about some of the conclusions that were made and some misconceptions in the gold market in India? Sure. I think, I think it, what's, what's interesting is he's, he's fairly bearish, at least for the first half of this year, in, in yes. terms of, of, of gold prices, really. Uh, he's expecting the, the, the fact that we've seen sort of fairly um, weak Chinese growth in, in, general, in general terms, that's right. going to come into the market and, and we'll see gold uh, prices struggling or continuing to struggle, I, I should say, over the course of this half of the year. But then in the, in the second half, he's expecting demand in, in the U.S. to pick up a little bit and, and that could uh, potentially come in as uh, we see tapering continue and, and, and you know, he's, he's expecting that to happen. I think, I think on, the, on the Indian side, we have seen muted gold demand in India mm -hmm. over the course of the last year and that's a largely a result of the, the interventions by the government to try and curb gold imports because clearly that's had a, a, a devastating effect yeah. on their well, current market. The interventions market. are Definitely. just unbelievable. I mean, raising the uh, uh, import duties from 2% uh, to 10%. Yeah. Uh, There's also the 80-20, which, exactly. which is interesting, where, where you you know you can only export 20%, and uh, it has definitely put in uh, significant restrictions. What he was saying, and what I thought was quite interesting, was that they're caught between a rock and a hard place. They're right. not going to, and a lot of people are saying, well, you know, surely the current account deficit has come out now or come down now. They can they can uh, remove those interventions from the market. And what he was saying is this is not going to happen, really, at least not in the short term, because if they were to remove those those interventions gold demand would, would shoot up again and, and right. that, that investment you know, would carry on and those imports would continue and come back and mm -hmm. that would kick the, the current account deficit again. And the, the problem is, is that the demand for gold in India hasn't abated. Yes. It's moved to the grey market, it, smuggling has increased. Awesome. And so the, the, the sense of it is, is that Indian demand hasn't changed. That's not going to change. Indian mm -hmm. demand for gold is, is there for the long term. The trick is, is perhaps, and then what he was saying was maybe what you need to do is, is ha provide other options from an investment point of view for those mm -hmm. that you know, are just buying it as an investment, that are just buying it for you know, monetary gain really. Maybe there's a, there are other more you know, flexible options or something that we can put in, or that they can put in place. And, You'll get some of the some within the gold market saying, "Well, that's just that's just silly," and, and sort of you know, right. th there's there's merit in buying gold, and there's right. a reason why they want physical gold. Right. India, as a as a country, needs to figure out how to you know move from an export led or move to an export led economy, and, and just figure out those things themselves. But the gist of it was, chances well, are those interventions. Aren't what he end suggested soon. was uh, what I read is um, you know. An industry solution was a gold scheme or something mm. with the uh, with the government and how you know that was a, suggest a suggestion by him to control the current account deficit. Sure. So okay, can you just explain? Well, that well, a, a gold scheme in that you know the, the, the problem is investing in importing you know in physical gold and, and right. what they were trying to do is to sort of maybe set up a bond a gold bond scheme or, or sort of something a, a paper mechanism really where the actual gold involved was was no longer there. So right. so providing a similar kind of. In ostensibly this, a similar kind of investment and reward in return, but without involving gold, which which right. I think could potentially help from a current account deficit point of view. You know, there, there are sort of questions as to whether or not that would actually provide yes. what uh, the same thing or an equivalent investment as as you would get with gold. Right. Exactly. Well, you know what? Thanks. 
Uh, thank you so much for being here, Jeff. My pleasure. Uh, you know, it's, you've answered a lot of questions. Very interesting uh, topics that you talk about. If you do want to track uh, and, and follow Jeff, uh, you can reach him at mindweb.com. Uh, the contact information is there. We'll put a link as well on the video, and you can follow all the podcasts that he does. Excellent interviews, a lot of insight. Thanks again, Jeff. Thank you. My okay. pleasure. Excellent.